Hey guys, ZTA Prime back here again. Recently I posted an unboxing video of the official Raspberry Pi 4 desktop kit, and today we're going to be putting it all together with dual 22 inch monitors and a couple powered speakers. Now the only reason I added these speakers was because when I bought these monitors I overlooked the fact that they didn't have speakers built in. Now the whole premise behind these videos here is just to see if the Raspberry Pi 4 can truly replace somebody's PC or use it as a supplemental PC. Now personally I don't believe that this could replace a power user's PC whatsoever but I do believe a setup like this is perfectly capable of getting most people by on what they do with their desktop or their laptop PC such as web surfing, email checking, YouTube video viewing, even light image editing is totally possible on a small PC like this. So today I'm going to show you how to get this kit set up. Now I'm not going to show you how to unbox the monitors and set your speakers up and things like that but we're going to get right down to the software and the SD card Card that's included with the Raspberry Pi desktop kit. But before we do that, let's get right down to pricing. So the Raspberry Pi 4 desktop kit consists of a Raspberry Pi 4 4 4GB model, a case for the Pi, your HDMI cables, power supply, mouse, keyboard, and a ready-to-go SD card, all for $129. The monitors I'm using here are 1080p AOC IPS monitors. They actually look really good and they're almost bezel-less, $70 each. And the speakers I have in the background worth $35 on a flash deal a couple months ago on Amazon. So in total, for this whole desktop kit that you see here on this table, $305. Now obviously, if you just want to get out with a single screen, you can get off a lot cheaper, but if you already have an HDMI-enabled television, which most people do, you can just get by with the Raspberry Pi 4 desktop kit itself for $130. But I was really interested to see what kind of experience I could get out of a dual monitor Raspberry Pi 4 setup, so I figured I'd go ahead and pick this stuff up just to see what it took to set something like this up and if it's all worth it in the end. So I haven't even plugged in this Raspberry Pi yet. I'm going to walk you through the steps on doing this. It should be pretty simple because this SD card is already preloaded with noobs and we can install the operating system we're going to be using in this video very easy from that SD. So here it is, the main bread and butter to this whole setup, the Raspberry Pi 4. Now this kit comes with the Raspberry Pi 4, 4 gigabyte model. We have four cores at 1.5 gigahertz, four gigs of RAM, two USB 2.0 ports, two USB 3.0 ports, USB type C for powering the unit, a 3.5 millimeter audio jack, two micro HDMI outputs. It also has AC Wi-Fi built in and Bluetooth 5.0. So I've just inserted the included SD card into the Raspberry Pi. I'm going to go ahead and plug everything in. We have two micro HDMI ports, the 3.5 millimeter audio jack, and our power input. Everything's really easy to get to on the side of the Pi. And for my first monitor, I'm going to use the HDMI port closest to the power input. Then we'll go next up for the secondary monitor. Since I'm using these external speakers, I'll need to plug in this 3.5 millimeter audio jack. And I need to tidy up my wires, and I will do that by the end of this, but all this really left to do is plug in our keyboard and mouse. So here we are with the Noobs SD card installed into the Raspberry Pi 4. We're going to boot it up for the first time. Now both monitors will populate, but we're only going to be using one screen for this setup section. So I'll only have to do this setup process one time, and what it's going to allow us to do is choose the operating system we want to install. This is the Noob Setup screen, and Noob stands for New Out of Box Software. So from the setup screen, we have two options. Now this is without connecting to the internet whatsoever. We have Raspbian and Libra Elect. Raspbian is going to be our full desktop. Libra Elect is media player software, but in this video, we're going to be tackling Raspbian. So there are more options with Noobs, but we're not online. We need to connect over Ethernet or Wi-Fi to get those extra operating system options, and we'll go ahead and do that right now. If you're using Ethernet, it'll already be connected online. If you want to connect over Wi-Fi, just select the Wi-Fi option on screen, find your network, put in your password, and you'll be connected. Once connected, you'll have the other operating systems listed here. We have Raspbian Lite, Full Raspbian Desktop, there's Laka, and a few others in here, but we're going to be focusing on the very first one, Raspbian. This is going to be a full installation of the Raspbian Desktop for the Raspberry Pi 4. We're going to choose the very first option. It's going to ask us to confirm. We want to click yes, and it'll start the installation process. It's just going to copy the files over to the correct location on the SD card. You don't need to be online for this to work with that very first option. It's already located on the noobs SD card. Now this process here with the exact SD card that I'm using right now took eight and a half minutes. So just be patient with it. It's going to install the operating system. It'll prompt us when we're done, and then we can boot into the desktop and start using the Raspberry Pi 4.
Once it's finished up, it'll prompt us to click OK. You can press Enter on the keyboard. Once we do that, it's going to automatically boot into the desktop operating system we just installed, which is Raspbian. And here it is. Both monitors should populate with desktop screens. Everything's looking pretty good so far, but there's a few more steps we need to do to get this set up correctly. We still need to enable overscan because we're not using the full screen. We have a black bar around both of the screens we're using here, but everything is functional right now. So before I did anything, I just changed the desktop background. I'm personally not a big fan of the stock one that comes preloaded. You'll just need to right click on any of the desktops and change the background from there. So on the initial boot, it'll prompt you with this setup wizard. We're just going to click start here. Make sure you have your country and keyboard set to the correct locale. I'm in the US, so I'm just setting mine to US. Next, it's going to prompt you to change the default password of the Raspberry Pi. The default is Raspberry, but I definitely recommend changing it because pretty much anybody can get into your system if they're on the same network or know the IP of your Raspberry Pi. Once you're finished setting that up, click next. Now it's going to ask us to set up the screens. This is going to enable overscan because right now we do have a border of black around each of these screens. It's not filling the full screen. We want to make sure this is checked. Next, it'll prompt us to set up our Wi-Fi. I've already done this in Noobs, but it's going to give me a list of the Wi-Fi networks available around me. I'll go ahead and choose my best one, 5 gigahertz. It's an AC network, so we're going to get better bandwidth than we would with 2.4. After your Wi-Fi is connected, it's going to ask us to update, and I do recommend doing the update. It'll take about five minutes depending on your network connection, but it's well worth it. All the new features will be downloaded to Raspbian, and you'll have the newest version. Once the update's complete, it's going to prompt us to reboot. We'll reboot the system one time, and then we're ready to go. Everything's set up. We have our Wi-Fi set up, overscan ready to go, and we're all updated. And here it is. We're now ready to use our Raspberry Pi as an everyday desktop. Working with both monitors is really easy to do. There's a few options we can change by right-clicking on either desktop and going to Desktop Properties. You'll get a little settings menu here, and we can control HDMI 1, which is my left screen, or HDMI 2, which will be my right screen. There's also an option to mirror the main display in case you want both of the displays to look exactly the same. But the way I have mine going is kind of a dual desktop workspace area. So I can just drag and drop different applications from my first screen to my second screen and so on and so on. This is the way I like to have it set up with dual screens here. So the operating system we're using here is a full desktop operating system. We have a drop down menu. We have a browser. There's also a built in application installation tool. You don't have to ever touch the terminal if you don't want to. But we are running Linux. This is Debian ported to the Raspberry Pi known as Raspbian. So over on the right hand side, I've just dropped Chromium. We're going to be running a YouTube video on the right hand side. And on the left hand side, I'm going to get some work done. Well, maybe not do much work, but I'm going to play Minecraft while the video is running on the right hand side. We can utilize these dual screens to the fullest on the Raspberry Pi 4, especially if you have the four gigabyte model that comes with this kit here. As you can see, I got Minecraft running here. This is the Raspberry Pi's version of Minecraft, and we have a YouTube video running on the right-hand side. Now, the YouTube video is actually running at 720p. The Pi 4 is capable of doing 1080p, but there's some frame drops. Now, your eye might not notice it, but it's definitely dropping some frames. I find that 720p works fine on the Raspberry Pi 4, especially in full screen mode. We got that over on the right hand side. Now it's not going to look as good as a 1080p video. And if you're running 720p video on a giant 43 inch or a 50 inch screen, it's not going to look as crisp as it would on a smaller monitor like this. I think it's perfectly acceptable to run 720p videos on a single monitor. I think it looks really good. Now as for everyday use of the Raspberry Pi 4 as let's say a desktop PC, I think performance would be perfectly acceptable for most people. If you're just one of those people who get online to check your Facebook, Reddit, check your email, maybe do some document editing and even light image editing, this would be perfectly acceptable for something like that. But if you're more of a power user and you need something for PC, gaming, streaming, and even heavy video editing, this is definitely not going to work out for you. You will need an x86 platform running Windows or an x86 version of Linux. But I gotta say, the Raspberry Pi has come a long way as a desktop PC in the last couple of years, and especially with the addition of the Raspberry Pi 4, performance is way up from the original Raspberry Pi, and this could act as an everyday desktop PC for light users. You could do your homework on here, you could do your taxes on here, browse the web, check your email, write an essay, 
There's a lot of stuff that can be done with the Raspberry Pi 4 like it sits as a desktop PC. And the software is getting better and better. We definitely need an upgrade on that GPU driver. There's talks about Vulkan being ported over and hopefully that does come to Raspbian, but we need some really good OpenGL support to help us out with everything that's going on on screen right now. And I do believe it's coming, it's just a matter of time. When the Pi 4 was initially released, the Pi Foundation did tout it as a desktop replacement, and I never believed that for a second because my desktop couldn't be replaced with a single board computer. But I do believe this is a great option as a supplemental PC or for somebody who doesn't already have a laptop or a computer to work with. The Raspberry Pi by itself is definitely not a supercomputer, but I do believe that you could get by with the everyday tasks you need to do online with a Raspberry Pi 4 in a setup like this. Even a single monitor setup is totally fine. There's thousands of supported applications for the Raspberry Pi, and if you want to get into video editing, you could do it on the Pi. It's just going to take a lot longer than it would on an x86 PC with a much powerful CPU. Like I said, image editing is possible using GIMP. You can install this very easily from the software installation menu or from Terminal. It's basically open source Photoshop. So in the end, do I really think that a Raspberry Pi 4 with its ARM CPU can replace an x86 desktop PC? In certain use case scenarios, I think it's more than powerful enough and more than capable enough to do so. But it's definitely not going to work out for a majority of power users out there. We just don't have that raw power back behind that CPU to get things done that we need to do. But having this set up as a supplemental PC to draw less power and get small tasks done, it's more than capable. Right here I'm playing Dreamcast, I'm actually upscaled to 720p. This is Soul Calibur emulating on the Raspberry Pi 4 without an overclock or a heatsink. But overall, I do think a dual monitor setup like this with a Raspberry Pi 4 is an awesome little machine. It just goes to show you what these little tiny CPUs have grown to do in the last few years. But that's pretty much it for this video. I really appreciate you watching. If you're interested in putting something like this together, I will leave links in the description. If you didn't catch my first video on the unboxing of the official Raspberry Pi 4 desktop kit, link is also listed in the description. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments below. But like always, thanks for watching.